Hello everyone, my name is Se Moon and I'm the community lead of the World Economy Forum. Uh, it's very nice to meet you. Um, and I would like to, for the next 25 minutes or so, walk you through the World Economy Forum and the technology pioneers um, of the forum. Um, I've been with the forum since 2017. So slightly over three years or so, I have been kind of interacting with all these great startup CEOs that make up the community. And there are lots of insights that I've also gathered um, throughout my times um, here at the forum. So yeah, the agenda would be to cover the World Economy Forum as well as technology pioneers and the startups that we engage um, here at the World Economy Forum. So before I actually go into the details, I wanted to actually um, show it to you how the media and the general public kind of perceives the World Economy Forum. So I searched in Naver and Google, um, typing the world, uh, the forum, and I can see snowy Davos Mountains. Um, I was able to see uh, panel interviews surrounded by a lot of participants global competitiveness report uh, covering where Korea is ranked amongst um, 140 other countries. Uh, Professor Klaus Schwab, our chairman and, and founder, um, as well as fourth industrial revolution, uh, which was in the market in 2016. Uh, and these are all great kind of, yeah, reflections of the forum but it does not represent all of them. So let's explore what the forum is all about. So the forum is an international uh, non-governmental organization founded back in 1971. And our headquarters is based in Geneva, Switzerland. Um, our different offices include um, New York, Beijing, Tokyo, and so on. The mission of the forum is to improve the state of the world. So all the initiatives that we have uh, has this kind of focal point of um, contributing to improve the state of the world. Um, some of the major events that we, we host include annual meeting in Davos, our flagship meeting, as well as annual meeting of the new champions, which is called Summer Davos, as well as other types of regional meetings, including um, uh, SAM meeting, as well as Africa, MENA, and so on, discussing on the regional kind of agendas that we have. And kind of our idea is to convene the leaders of different stakeholders, and um, we kind of provide a platform for everyone to convene, to be able to shape agendas and uh, provide a way for them to execute them. So our approach is uh, based on the fact that there's no single entity who can improve the state of the world, our mission on its own. So the forum kind of gathers uh, different stakeholders, uh, very important kind of building blocks of the society to be able to have their collective brain power to be able to come up with the most uh, important and urgent agendas and kind of set up the action plans to tackle those kind of challenges. So you can see from this diagram that we're convening governments, uh, international organizations, civil society, business, media, and academia, all these very important kind of building blocks of society to be able to um, proceed with uh, without excluding any important players there. If you look at the history, um, as I briefly mentioned, we are founded nearly 50 years ago in 1971. Um, and we've started with European Management Forum. So back then it was about European region. Uh, we were convening the CEOs of large corporates uh, to come up with and think about 21, uh, no, the next year's um, economic issues and so on. And we were kind of based around different events um, so that people come and uh, on, a, on, a, on a regular basis to be able to discuss certain agendas. And then we kind of evolved to develop different communities um, of different experts. So for example, we were building the community of tech pioneers, um, startup CEOs, academia, civil society. 
um, and we've truly become the multi-stakeholder kind of format. Um, and when we have a lot of these communities who are composed of really the experts uh, in such fields, uh, we are able to generate knowledge. So we're able to um, kind of come up with insights that are capturing different kind of aspects of the society. So some of the reports that we were able to generate by having these communities include global competitiveness report, global risks report, gender gap report, all those kind of knowledge uh, was able to get generated by having a lot of different experts uh, from different walks of life. Um, thus, we were kind of developing knowledge uh, in certain areas and not just kind of generating those kind of insights via the form of reports. Um, we were able to create different projects that kind of can actually be translated into an actual impact, not just um, ending it from a knowledge perspective. So we created over 100 projects. And now um, in 2020, where we stand is that we have 17 different platforms, which I'll explain in the next slide, uh, where all these kind of projects fall under. So yeah. So these are the 17 platforms, all the way from advanced manufacturing to new economy and society, health, energy, artificial intelligence, blockchain, and so on and so forth. So some of these kind of platforms kind of include broad industries, uh, but, and a lot of them also include different technologies, right? Artificial intelligence and machine learning is one of the kind of emerging technologies that we are seeing. So the platform, the one, one point that I would like to highlight is that just the reason why we didn't specifically use technologies or industries, but platforms is that we are kind of looking at the openness of the, the, the term that we're not being siloed into certain industries, but then we're kind of opening it for other peripheral industries, peripheral technologies to be able to work with certain platforms. So these are very open. And as I mentioned in the previous slide, our 100 plus kind of projects are kind of mapping to each of these platforms. And a lot of different kind of stakeholders within specific platforms come together um, on a regular basis to discuss about issues, uh, to release reports, white papers, as well as gather in physical meetings and discuss about um, how we can overcome some of the challenges that we are seeing under specific platforms. And in doing so, the role of startups is really important and it's getting more important as kind of times go by. Um, we're faced, um, the global society is faced with a lot of challenges, including climate change, COVID-19, renewable energy, automation, aging society, all these kind of um, societal issues uh, needs to be raised and needs to overcome um, with certain solutions and often very innovative ones. And in the age of fourth industrial revolution and innovation is booming everywhere, startups are one of very important sources of raising these challenges as well as bringing solutions. And if you look from that lens, tech pioneers, technology pioneers of the forum in, plays an important role. So just to give you kind of uh, in a nutshell of what the tech pioneers are, um, it's a community that was established back in 2000, about two decades ago. And we have selected um, ever since most innovative and industry leading startups and Starting from this year, we have expanded our cohort um, to 100 startups um, that are being selected each year. And once they're selected, uh, they engage with the forum for two years. And what we look for in terms of selection is that we are looking for innovation, how innovative the com company is, how they're kind of leveraging the technologies uh, in order to bring their value to the society, as well as impact. Um, the impact they're bringing to the world is not so niche, but then broad enough to be beneficial to, to the broader society that we have um, throughout the globe. 
as well as the leadership, integrity of the leader, as well as how visionary the leader is, because often the case tech pioneers will be sitting with alongside um, large corporates, public figures, civil society, different leaders um, that we engage at the forum. Uh, and what's also really important is the relevance to the forums we're experiencing. As I mentioned, we have 17 different platforms. And yeah, we are looking for companies that can really contribute to the work streams that we have under the 17 platforms, including a lot of projects, reports, and so on. A lot of main reprints there, they come to include annual meeting of the new champions, technology pioneers workshop that we have um, within the community, as well as annual meeting at Davos and different kind of regional meetings, depending on where they're located. And some of the path tech pioneers include Google, Airbnb, Twitter, Cloudflare, Kickstarter, Slack, all these kind of household names have gone through the tech pioneers program. Um, and now uh, one of the biggest and most impactful companies that are kind of disrupting the world and industry. And there are some Korean companies that were selected, including Kakao, Lunid, and Skylabs. Just to give you, um, an example or some examples of, kind of recent tech pioneers just to give you an idea of who they are. So Appeal Sciences uh, based in California, they develop an um, edible coding product um, extracted from different plants and that are being kind of um, um, put on the surface of different kind of fruits. Uh, that can increase the shelf life um, and kind of life during the supply chain management. So quite a lot of food are being wasted uh, from the production towards the consumption. And they're doing these great, um, um, they're leveraging these great technologies to be able to increase the shelf life as well as the life of, from the production and the consumption side to be able to eliminate a lot of kind of waste um, produced uh, from that process. Volocopter based in Germany, uh, selected last year, is developing EVTOL, virtual takeoff and landing, which can pave the way to, to our future well into the future of creating kind of air taxis for use, which provides a lot of great insights on how we should design the cities, how we should design the transportation of the future cities. So a lot of kind of policies involved uh, when it comes to, comes to looking at their um, portfolio and their businesses. Air Protein um, has this innovative idea on rather than generating CO2 by creating meat and protein, they're actually leveraging the CO2, um, mixing with the micro called hydrogenotrophs to create an alternative protein. This not only and it spares uh, the CO2 that should have been created by having the conventional way of creating it, but that's also kind of sucking the CO2 out of the wear air. So there, all, all of these kind of very creative tech pioneers are one of those kind of examples that we can see from, from the tech pioneers cohort. And their contributions are immense when it comes to, to engaging with the forum in that they're interacting with different stakeholders, including large corporates, governments, uh, academia, to give you a small example. So corporates um, are interacting with startups and learning from TP, tech pioneers from that. Um, startups and corporates have different kind of ways of operating when it comes to speed of the innovation, um, the resources, the customer base, all are different and startups can also help uh, discuss some partnership models to be able to bring innovations to the society and the business uh, by interacting with large corporates. With governments, um, often the case is that governments are lacking in expertise when it comes to looking at uh, emerging technologies and how the technologies can kind of impact the general society and their countries or regions. And what the startups um, are doing, including the tech pioneers, is 
to provide and provide an advice uh, to the governments on how we can maximize the beneficial aspect of all these technologies while kind of mitigating and minimizing the risks that come along with it. So, because yeah, they are one of the experts in, in, in the fields of such technologies and businesses. They also speak with academia on that. A lot of tech pioneers um, are spin-offs from universities. So they come uh, from the background of bringing innovation from the lab to the commercialization. So they can often kind of provide advice on how to reduce the gap uh, from translating the innovation from the lab towards commercialization. So that's one area where they can also be able to provide insight. Um, and within the startups themselves, within the technology pioneers, um, they're kind of going through the similar path, although their industry are diversely different. Um, they can, for example, discuss within themselves about how we can actually manage the relationship with the board when you grow a company from people of 10 to 100, how do you maintain the culture of innovation, uh, culture of their unique uh, company and so on. So all these are, um, can be discussed among the members of Technology Pioneers and the startups that we engage. So they're actually being mentors and mentees themselves, which is a great kind of way of learning from the peers. And Aside from these, um, of course, their kind of main engagement and main contributions to the forum is to um, contribute via 17 platforms um, that we have uh, by sharing their kind of specific expertise in such kind of verticals that we have. These are some, some kind of ways in which they can contribute uh, and through which they can grow as well. So they're invited to the different meetings. So these are some of the photos from kind of past meetings, including annual meeting of the new champions and so on and so forth. So they're often invited as speakers to kind of share their insights and ask, uh, be asked questions about how we can yeah, proceed with all these different technologies. And as I mentioned, they come to platforms and um, provide their insights uh, in different kind of thought pieces. So white papers from mobility is one example. And we also have reports from health platform on precision medicine. So a lot of them are involved in providing their experiences there. And not just um, to the kind of the, the communities that we have at the forum, but they're generally sharing knowledge to the public as well. So these are some of the agenda articles that we have. Um, uh, and we have great readership um, throughout the globe that are actually looking at these knowledge to be able to gain insights. And they often share their own kind of experiences um, to the public through the forums kind of platforms. Uh, to distribute their knowledge. Um, and on the right, um, throughout all these kind of activities, through all these um, contributions, um, they're actually getting a lot of uh, knowledge and network out of um, engaging with the forum. So compared to the industry and analyzing roughly about 100 tech pioneers, they're more likely to exit about two to three times, they're more likely to sustain um, compared to the industry about twice. Um, they uh, tend to fail uh, about one third compared to kind of the industry standards. Some of the lessons learned uh, from my pers personal kind of takeaways uh, by engaging with uh, the successful tech pioneers include that when I actually look at them, they're not purely kind of wanting to take advantage of or leverage the forum to be able to grow their business. Of course, that's a really important aspect of it, but their core kind of attitude is to give away their knowledge. And when they give, uh, naturally there comes along a lot of benefits and that actually drives them to grow. So their attitude towards kind of giving away 
giving their knowledge and giving their insights to others that naturally kind of attracts um, success, I would say, of their own companies. And they're generally mission oriented. Um, at least the companies that I have interacted with, of course, they're pro for profit companies, but they had clear mindset of how to actually make the world a better place. They have the mission to actually change the world in a positive way. So mission um, was at their heart and they never let go of that. And that really stayed at the center of what they do. The bottom two is kind of kind of capturing that they truly enjoy discussions and yeah, they are generally a knowledge seeker in that when they were in discussions that are not directly kind of related to or not directly falling into their specific domains or verticals, they still really enjoy talking with different people and really eager to learn from them um to that can actually be a valuable asset when it comes to looking at your own industries as well so those are some important lessons learned and also yeah when i actually look at a lot of companies that i've interacted with uh it seems like and like going through the COVID, that's also very important is um i think having the vision of becoming a unicorn um and aim high aiming high and growing and dominating the market that kind of vision is really important and kind of um having this like set goal that is really the one that everyone in the group can can look for um that's really important but um in reality when it comes to executing them <clears throat> it's really important to have a camel mindset where the camels are really resilient and very thoughtful, um, thinking about strategic growth rather than very short-term growth, and very cautious. Right? When you look at camels, they're very cautious, meaning that they are maintaining reserve to go through kind of uh, turbulent times, including kind of pandemic. They're very financially conservative, uh, hiring the right team, and focusing on the technologies. <laughs> And as I kind of mentioned earlier, have very long-term vision of um, looking into the future and converting challenges along the way um, that can be a segue into the long-term success. Um, and they're also very customer focused. Um, they're not looking at others, but really purely focusing on the customers um to be able to provide the maximum value to them which kind of leads to their success as well so combining the vision of a unicorn and the execution plans like camels i think that's really important um characteristics as well as what's really needed especially in the times of covid these are some of the photos that um i have gathered from my experiences um, at the forum. So uh, one on the left is uh, from Davos meeting um, in the workshop where we invited a speaker to talk about how we can gain trust from customers uh, from a corporate perspective, where it be large corporates or small startups. Yeah, gaining trust and kind of continuing their trust is really an important issue. So it was really great of an opportunities for tech pioneers to interact with large corporates um, to see how each other kind of thinks of trust uh, when it comes to uh, customer trust. On the right includes um, dinner discussions and we not only have tech pioneers come together but we invite all these renowned speakers that are not directly uh, technology related, but then some, somewhere they have the common ground with the implications of technology. So we would talk about universal basic income when it comes to uh, an age where robots or kind of uh, machines will do a lot of kind of work for us and a lot of people will be losing jobs. So there are lots of kind of uh, thoughts that can be kind of inserted in there when it comes to looking at the topic. Um, inequality in global south, 
um, as well as AI, how do we embed AI in robotics so that it really best serves the needs of the humanity while reducing the bias. <clears throat> Some other meetings include academia and industry collaboration and annual meeting of new champions where it, we invited presidents of different universities and tech pioneers and large corporates to discuss about how we can bring the innovation effectively uh, from academia to, to the corporate world as well as startups and how each and other uh, can partner to be able to bring the most value to the society. Uh, Tech Pioneers Workshop on the right, uh, we're discussing about different partnership models and startup ecosystems. How do we ensure uh, that we embed ethics as well as uh, sustain that ethics in businesses? So uh, as you can see, we kind of break out into small groups and discuss. We come back to the plenary and they share their kind of insights with broader group of people that were in the same room. These are some kind of fun photos that we, we have taken. Um, on, on the last day, our partner of the World Kai Forum, NASDAQ, kindly invited us over to ring the closing bell. So all the tech pioneers that were gathered in the workshop uh, were able to get on the stage and kind of was yeah honored to be ringing the bell. And this really was fascinating experience for all the tech pioneers in that a lot of them, if you're a startup CEO, one of your kind of final goal, not final goal, but then really important milestone that you're looking at into the future is to go on an IPO or get an M&A. And um, this was a great kind of yeah way for them to actually feel what it feels like uh, when, when going through the IPO and ringing the final bell. Um, these are some insights and articles that um, I have been capturing throughout my um, kind of three years at the, uh, at the forum uh, up until now, is that I have, uh, with the help of all these tech pioneers, um, written some articles about kind of different policies in different regions, um, including Singapore, Korea, Kenya, Israel, and Brazil, and was able to kind of capture their voices and how they look at the policies around uh, their own country and how it's, uh, it's impacting their businesses as well. Um, I also surveyed um, tech pioneers on how they're looking into the five years um, into the future and how the technology can um, bring benefits to the world and how the world should have been changed uh, within five years. Uh, there are some insights that can, uh, that were captured in annual meeting of new champions last year when I actually showed you up how academia, uh, tech pioneers and corporates came together and this was all the insights were captured to uh, create this article on how to build an entrepreneurial university, how the university can support um, the, the patents, um, the technology that are coming from the academia to be able to translate into the actual commercialization. And on, on the last piece, um, we ha I have done an analysis of startup policies in five different regions, this time including Singapore, um, Israel, United Kingdom, and, um, and Germany as well. So these were um, what I have prepared uh, for this. I hope my kind of presentation slide gave you, my talk gave you some better understanding of the World Economic Forum and how we are engaging with the startups, which is not well known. Yeah, a lot of people think about the forum and they kind of, kind of they come up with image on we are us interacting with like public figures and large corporates, but there are lots and lots of initiatives at the World Economic Forum where we are having the startup CEOs at the center stage and have 
then can the spotlight there with innovations to which can eventually bring uh, the benefits to the world. So hope this kind of resolves some of your kind of possible questions in the World Thai Forum, but happy to receive any questions. If you have any um, comments, uh, feel free to send it over to my email. Um, and I'll be happy to to answer them in any way. But thank you very much for your time and wishing you a successful conference.